Hi everyone, good morning. Nice to be with you again in this morning devotional. I hope you're all well, despite of another uh, extension for quarantine here in uh, Metro Manila and other whole country. I hope this message again finds you well. Today, I have a special lesson to share with you. Now, I have a question for all of you. Let me share with you my question. Okay. Okay, here is my question. When you buy a box of grain, let's say a sack of rice or a box of rice, how would you feel when you receive an overflowing amount? As in overflowing amount, more than you expected. I believe you will be happy, you will be grateful, you will be um, feel in awe because you were given with so much amount. You see more than uh, what you expected. You see an abundance. Uh, today, our lesson is related to that. Okay. Our theme scripture this morning is in Luke chapter 6, verses 37 to 38. There's two verses. Luke chapter 6, verses 37 to 38. Okay, let's read. In verse 37, it says there, Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Did you catch that message? Did you catch the message of these um, verses? And 38, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be, formed, will be put into your lap. Or with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, related to the question that I asked you a while ago, there, uh, we can represent this scripture with an image. Okay. By the way, the title of our message this morning is Overflow. Overflow. Now, this is the image that I'm referring to, to refer to the theme scripture this morning. The image is someone going to the market to buy some grain. In our case, maybe buy a sack of rice or a box of corn or whatever grain that we are buying in the market. Now, when the merchant, okay, the buyer uh, gave some money, okay, and then you hold out your container to be filled with that grain, whatever that grain is that you've just purchased, uh, some merchants are going to be stingy and they will cheat on you. Some merchants will fill your container almost to the top, but they will not give you a uh, full amount and in hope that you will accept that and walk away. But not, that is not what happened in this case. In this case, Jesus speaks of a merchant who gives you a good measure. But does it stop there? It presses the grain down in order to fit more in there. He wants to give you more. And then he shakes the container to try to settle the grain so that it can fit even more. Have you seen a label in a cereal box? Contents may settle. So that you will not complain when you got a half empty box. Sometimes when we buy a cereal box or any any cereals in a box, sometimes it's half empty, sometimes it's not full. Okay. Now Jesus doesn't stop there as well. Okay. When, it, when we read here that the grain is running over, it's full amount. So the merchant, okay. The supplier is so interested in giving you a grain that actually spills over. As you're holding the container, that, as, as you can see on the picture, as you're holding the container, it can hold, the, it cannot hold the rest of the grain. It's spilling over just like that. There's so much. It's full. Now, how do you like that image? 
How do you like this picture of God's generosity and blessing on your life as the life you have in the church? Now today, this morning, I want to ask what, what will take for us to experience that kind of blessing. What this passage tells us. Now this passage, the scripture that we read, tells us three characteristics. Three characteristics of people whom God blesses extravagantly, abundantly. Now I'm going to give you three characteristics on how God blesses us. Now the question is, how can we overflow with God's blessings? How can we overflow with God's blessings? Point number one, love rather than hate. Love rather than hate. Rather than hating your enemies, love them. Now, in the preceding verses of the scripture that we read, it says there, now Jesus said, But I say to you, who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. The one who structure the cheek, offer the other also. Okay. Offer the other also. Does anyone here have any enemies? Anyone? You have any enemies? I hope there's none. Okay. I bet that somebody's face just entered your mind. Maybe. It just ended your mind. Can you think of anyone you'd hate to meet in any places? Say in a supermarket. Especially when you're going out, you remember someone that you feel angry? Or is there anyone who hurt you so bad that you think about them almost every day? Or maybe from time to time? Even though when they hurt you very, very a long time ago. A long time ago. And I remember in my office or in a workplace, I used to accommodate students. But some students are, are really um, um, has bad behavior. And they don't treat you with respect and politeness. And sometimes I feel hurt when they do that. They hurt when they do that. Sometimes I feel like getting even with them. Somehow getting with revenge with them in some way. I feel like uh, I want to get even with them. But that is not right. That's what we do, we do when someone hurts us. That's what we feel. But Jesus, what Jesus says here is to love your enemies. To love your enemies. As we have said, as we have read in verse 37, forgive and you will be forgiven. Forgive and you will be forgiven. So when you forgive, you will, be, you will also be forgiven. I want to share with you a story that happened a long time ago. Okay. Uh, 20, 20 to 30 years ago in Africa. Uh, there was a race war in Africa. And that what, when that race war uh, stop. This is what happened in that story of forgiveness. After apartheid ended in South Africa, a white police officer named Mr. Vanderbrook was put on trial. He was put on trial because of the crimes that he did. Okay. Now, this is what happened in that story. The court found that he had come to a woman's house, shot her son at point blank range and then burned the young man's body on the fire while he and his officers parted nearby. The woman's husband was killed also by the same man and his body was also burned. Now, what would this wife and mother say to the face of such murderous cruelty? that father caused indignity to her husband's and son's remains. What do you think this would this woman would do? If they killed his husband and, and her husband and her son and they burned him. 
uh, Mr. Van de Broek was found guilty of doing this. And this is what the woman did by the end of the trial. This is what she said in the courthouse. She said she wants three things. I want three things, she said. I want first to be taken to the place where my husband's body was burned so that I can gather up the dust and give his remains a decent burial. My husband and son were my only family. I want secondly for Mr. Van de Bo to become my son. I would like for him to come twice a month to the ghetto and spend a day with me so that I can pour out on him whatever love I still have. And finally, I would like Mr. Van de Bo to know that I offer him my forgiveness because Jesus Christ died to forgive. This was also the wish of my husband. And so I would kindly ask someone to come to my side and lead me across the courtroom so that I can take Mr. Van Vanderbilt in my arms, embrace him, and let him know that he is truly forgiven. That is a very touching story. It really happened. Okay. In fact, and the woman was approaching okay, to the man, Mr. Van der, Van der Broek, in the court, uh, courtroom. Okay, she fainted and she collapsed because of overflowing. Or over, she, he was overwhelmed with feelings. Now that is real forgiveness. As N.T. Wright, one of the authors, said, think of the best you can do to the worst person and then go ahead and do it. Think of the people to whom you are tempted to be nasty and lavish generosity on them instead. Now, do you want to overflow with God's blessing? Then forgive extravagantly. Forgive extravagantly. Second point, okay, so that we can overflow with God's blessing. Give rather than hold. Give rather than hold. Rather than holding on our possessions, give them away. Let's give them away. Jesus said in Luke 6, 30 to 31, Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others will do to you, do so to them. And again in verse 38, that we read, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Do you believe this? Are you beginning to see how impossible this is? One of the greatest things, the test we face is how generous we are with our stuff, with the things that we have, with our possessions. Now we can take a lot, take a lot of things, but it's hard to pay this one. Being generous. Now here Jesus commands us to live with radical generosity. Jesus commands us to live with radical generosity, giving extravagantly and generously with the thought, without the thought of how it will be benefiting us. Or it will be beneficial to us. The Bible calls us for radical generosity on our parts, to our families, to our believers, fellow believers, to the ministry of the church, to those who aren't Christians, and even to our enemies. Let me give you a test. How could you know if you are generous in giving? When you buy, when you are buying in street market, say in Divisoria, in that place, that's a public market. You always bargain. You always want to uh, buy 
stuff with less amount. You want to bargain. You want things cheaper than what, what they are sold. Okay. We want to buy cheaper things because we want to save. But when you eat in a fine dining restaurant, okay, sometimes we give a tip. Sometimes it's okay for us to leave uh, some uh, with some uh, amount or let's say leftovers. Although it costs us so much. If you can eat in a expensive restaurant, but when we are buying in a poor people, okay, we want to treat them cheaply. We don't give generously towards those who are more deserving, those who are needy. So that's how we test if we are generous. In my case, when I'm uh, riding on a pedicum, yeah, I, I usually pay them uh, overpriced. Not because I want, I, I'm proud of what I have, I want to I want to impress them. But in some way, that is my donation to them. Okay? That is my gift to them. Uh, just in some way, that's my how I have. In some way, it's like a charity with dignity. So give more to those who are needy. Now, do you want to overflow with God's blessing? Instead of hating your enemies, love them. Instead of holding to your possessions, keep them away. Now, there's one more that Jesus says that we can overflow with blessings. So that is the third point. Okay. Judge yourself rather than others. Judge yourself rather than others. Read in Luke 6.37, Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. This is one of those verses that is frequently misapplied. Of course, this verse does not mean that we should never notice the fault of others. How do we know this? In just a few verses, Jesus is going to tell us to observe the fruit of people's lives because we can discover their true natures when we observe their behavior. Jesus is not telling us to be not to be discerning or not to evaluate others. So what Jesus was telling us here. <laughs> About condemning is con about condemning a harsh and judgmental attitude that always finds fault with others. That's our nature. We always find fault with others. We find fault with the government. We find fault with our leaders. We find fault with our boss. We find fault with employees. We find fault with other family members, with our friends, and with so many people. We always find fault with them. Without seeing our faults. So what Jesus is telling us is not to serve God's place in judging and condemning other people. So let us not be always critical and find fault with others. Show mercy to others even we don't deserve it. Say for example, what is your reaction to corrupt politician that we are hearing nowadays in the news. Do you judge them? Do you condemn them? Without noticing how, how corrupt we are as well in ourselves. Without seeing our sins and our faults as well. So before we condemn them, before we judge them, let's judge ourselves correctly. Let's see what's, what's, what faults we have in our hearts. So how can we live God's blessing? By loving 
our enemies rather than hating them. By giving away our possessions instead of holding on to them. And to see what's wrong with yourself rather than looking on what's other, other people's wrong. If we live this way, Jesus says it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back. If you want radical love, then love others radically. If you want radical generosity, then love others and give radically. If you want radical grace, then you can extend grace others radically. If we live this way, Jesus says we will overflow with blessings. Again, to overflow with blessings is to love rather than hate. Give rather than hate. And to judge yourself rather than others. Amen. So that is my short message this morning. I hope somehow I will I was able to help you virtue and inspire. I hope you have some takeaway this morning. As you go on working, maybe working from home, maybe some of you are working on site. Uh, may God uh, keep you safe and healthy and protect you as well. Before we end, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your generosity to us. Thank you for your radical grace and radical love. Thank you for your mercy. Help us to as well to extend your grace and your love and your generosity to others. And to extend your mercy to others as well. And help us to learn from your word and put this into practice. And please protect us, oh God, especially from this spreading disease. Keep us healthy for the sake of our families too and our loved ones. And be with us. And may this uh, disease, coronavirus, soon comes to an end. Be with us, Father, and bless us. We entrust ourselves to you, and we do pray. And we ask, in the name of the Lord Jesus, your Son, our Savior. Amen. That's all, everyone. Uh, have a good day and good morning. Goodbye.